Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Well, welcome back here in Boston. We're at the BCEC as we are starting to wrap up our coverage here of day two of the Red Hat Summit 2019. Along with Stu Miniman, I'm John Walls, and we're now joined by Ashish Badani, who is the Senior Vice President of Cloud Platforms at Red Hat. Been a big day for you, hasn't it, uh, uh, Mr. Badani? Huh? It sure has, thanks for having me back on. You bet, all right, so uh, OpenShift 4. We saw the unveiling, um, your baby gets you know, introduced to the world. What's the reaction been between this morning and this afternoon in terms of people, what they're asking you about, what they're most curious about, and maybe what their best reaction is? Yeah, um, so it's not necessarily a surprise for the folks who've been following OpenShift closely. We put the beta out for a little while, um, so that's the good news. Um, but let me roll back just a little. Sure. Um, I think uh, another part of the news that was really important for us is uh, our announcement from Milestone that we crossed, which is 1,000 customers. Right, and uh, it was at this very summit, and and you know the cube definitely knows this well, right? Because we've been talking for a while. Um, at this very summit uh, in 2015, four years ago, that we launched OpenShift version three, mm -hmm. right? And so you know you fast forward four years, right? And now the diversity of use cases that we see, you know, spanning you know established apps, cloud native apps. Uh, we heard Exxon talking about AI, ML, data science that they're sort of putting on the on the platform. Uh, in a variety of different industries uh, is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think the way OpenShift 4 has come along for us is um, us having the opportunity to learn um, what have all these customers been doing well and what else do we need to do on the platform to make that experience a better one, right? Mm -hmm. How do we reimagine enterprise Kubernetes mm -hmm. to take it to the next level? And I think that's what we're introducing to the industry. Yeah, that's right. I think back, you know, four years ago, Kubernetes was not something that was on the tip of the tongues of most people here. Congratulations on a thousand. I hear what, 100, 150 new customers every quarter is kind of the, the, the current rate there. But what I've really enjoyed talking to, you know, I've talked to a CIO and they're like, okay, we're talking about digital transformation, we're talking about how we're modernizing all of our environments, and you know, OpenShift is the platform that we do it. So Talk a little bit, you know, from a customer standpoint, you know, the speeds, the feeds, the technical right. pieces, but that, that, that outcome, that, what is it an enabler of for your customers? Yeah, so, uh, excellent point, Stu. So, we've seen wholesale, uh, I guess, uh, complete digital transformations are underway with, with our customers, right? So whether it's uh, Deutsche Bank, uh, okay, you came and talked about, you know, running thousands of containers now, uh, moving a whole bunch of workloads onto the platform. Uh, which is you know in incredible to see uh, whether it's uh, customers like Volkswagen, mm -hmm. right? Who talking yesterday? Um, if you got that about building an autonomous, uh, mm -hmm. you know, self-driving uh, sets of technologies um, on the platform, uh, what we're seeing is not just you know what we thought we would only see in the beginning, which is one build some you know cloud native apps and digital apps and, and so on, um, or you know modernize some existing apps and, and bring them on the platform but also technologies that are making a fundamental difference. And I'll call one out. So I'm, I'm in a, uh, a judge for the Innovation Awards, right? We do this every year, I have been for, for many years. I love it, it's one of the, my favorite parts of the show. This year, um, we had one entry which is one of the winners, which is HCA, which is a healthcare provider, mm -hmm. um, talking about how they've been using the OpenShift platform um, as a means to make a fundamental difference in patients' lives. And when I say fundamental difference, right, actually saving lives, mm -hmm. right? So, so and, and you know, you'll, you'll hear more about their story, um, but what they've done is be able to say, look, how can we uh, detect early warning signals uh, faster than we have been, you know, take some AI technology, you know, and, and, and correlate against that, uh, and see how we can reduce um, sepsis uh, mm -hmm. within, within patients. Uh, it's a very personal story for me. My mother died of sepsis. Mm. Um, and the fact that they've been able to do this, and I think they say, they're reporting, they've already saved dozens of lives based on this, right? That's when you know, you know the things that you're doing are, are making a real difference, mm -hmm. making a real transformation, not just in our actual um, customers' lives, but in, 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 in you know, end users and, and people around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you were saying earlier too, Ashesh, about um, uh, looking at what customers are doing and then trying to improve upon that experience and give them a, a, a more, um, I guess, a, a more effective experience, whatever the, the right uh, adjective might be in terms of with what you're doing with four. Um, if you had to look at it and say, okay, these, 
these are the, the two or three pillars yeah. of this that, that where I think we've made the biggest improvement or the, or the biggest change. What would those be? Yeah, so um, one is you know, to, to look at the world as it is in some sense, right? Which is what are customers doing? Um, customers want to deploy to a hybrid cloud, right? They want choice, they want independence with regard to you know, which environments they run it on, right? Whether it's physical, virtual, you know, private, or any, any public cloud. Um, customers want you know, one platform to say, I want to run these you know, next generation, cloud native, microservice based applications mm -hmm. along with my established stateful applications. Customers want a platform for innovation, right? So for example, we have customers that say, look, I really need a modern platform because I want to recruit you know, the next generation of developers from colleges. If I don't give them the ability to play with you know, Go or Python or you mm -hmm. know, new databases, you know, they're going to go to some Silicon Valley company and right? I'm going to deplete my pool of talent that I need to compete, right? Because digital transformation is about mm -hmm. taking existing companies and making them digitally enabled. Going forward, what we're also seeing is the ability for us to say, well, maybe the experience that you know, we've given existing customers can be improved. How do we, for example, give them a platform that's you know, more autonomous in nature, right? More self-driving in nature, mm -hmm. that can heal itself, right? Based on, for example, there's a critical update that's required that we can send over the air mm -hmm. to them. Um, how can we bring greater automation into the platform? Mm -hmm. And it's all of those ideas that we've got based on how customers are using it today is what we're bringing to bear mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm. All right. Ashesh, one of the areas that we've been trying to help customers parse through the language is everybody's talking about platforms. If you look at the public clouds, you know, everybody's all in on Kubernetes. Right. Um, you know, a few weeks ago we were at the Google Cloud event, talked to Red Hat there. Yeah. You know, there's Anthos, there's OpenShift. Yeah. You look at Azure, we have Satya Nadella up on yeah. stage and you're like, okay, well they've, they've got their own yeah. Kubernetes platform, but I've got OpenShift fully integrated there. Can yeah. you help us kind of understand as yeah. to, you know, how those fit together because it's, it's an interesting yeah. and changing dynamic. Yeah. Well, it's a very Silicon Valley buzzword, right? Everyone wants a platform, wants to build a platform, you know, Facebook's a platform, Uber's a platform, Airbnb, everything's a seeming platform, right? Um, what I really want to sort of focus on more is with regard to, you know, we want to be able to give folks literally an abstraction level, right? An ability for uh, companies to say, I want to embrace digital transformation. Before we get there, someone's like, well, what's digital transformation? I don't even understand what that means anymore. Right. My simple definition is you know, just basically flipping the table. Right. Typically companies spend 80% on maintenance, 20% innovation, how do we flip that? Mm -hmm. So they're spending 80% on innovation, 20% maintenance, okay. So if, if we're sort of thinking in those terms, I said let me give you a, a way to develop those applications, spend more time and energy on innovation, mm -hmm. and then allow for you to take advantage of what I'll call a pool of resources. Compute, network, and storage, you know, across you know, the environment that you have in place, some of which you might own, mm -hmm. some of which some third parties might provide for you, and some of which you get from public cloud. And take advantage of innovation that's being done outside, right? Uh, innovative services that come from uh, either public cloud providers or ISVs or software providers. And then be able to do that in a very rapid fashion, you know, develop, deploy, iterate quickly. So to me, that is really fundamentally what we're trying to provide customers, and it takes different forms yeah. that we're trying to package in. And All right, maybe them. you can explain the, the Azure OpenStack seems different than some of the other partnerships. Yeah. Two years ago when we were sitting in this yeah. building, we talked to you about AWS yeah. with OpenShift and that partnership, so you know, what's differentiated and special about the Azure OpenStack Yeah, the, the Azure partnership is, is it's, it's a good question because you know, we've now taken um, our partnering with the public uh, cloud provider sort of to the next level, if you will. Um, with Azure, there's, there's a few things at play. Um, first, it's a jointly um, off, uh, offered um, managed service from uh, Red Hat and Microsoft, uh, where we're both supporting it uh, together, right? Mm -hmm. So in the case of you know, running OpenShift in AWS, right, that's you know, OpenShift uh, directly delivering that service, right? In this case, it's Red Hat and Microsoft working closely together to, to, to make that happen. Um, it's a native service to uh, Azure, so if you saw in the keynote, right, you could use a command line um, to call OpenShift, uh, you know, directly integrated into the Azure uh, command line. Um, it's available within you know, the interface of, of uh, Microsoft uh, Azure, right? So, so it feels like a native service. You can take advantage of other uh, Azure services and bring those to bear. So obviously increases um, developer experience uh, from that perspective. Um, we also inherit all the, the compliances, the certifications that Microsoft mm -hmm. Azure has as well. Uh, for that service, as well as all the availability um, requirements that they put out there. So it's much more closely integrated together, much better developer experience, um, native to Azure, uh, and then um, the ability for the Microsoft sales team 
to go out and sell it mm -hmm. to their customers you know, in conjunction with Red Hat. Yep. We, you, know, you talk a lot about different partnerships, right? And um, um, bringing this collaborative, open mindset to each and every relationship. Um, how hard is that to do? Because you, know, you have your way of doing things and it's worked very well, and yet you go out and you have these new partnerships or extensions of partnerships, and, and not everybody with whom you work does things the same way. And so everybody's got to be malleable to a yeah. certain extent, uh, but just in terms of being that flexible all the time, yeah. you know, what, what, what does that do for you? Yeah, so we take that for granted sometimes, yeah. right? The way we work. Uh, and I don't mean to say that to, to, to be boastful, arrogant in, in any fashion. Um, I had an interview um, earlier today uh, and a reporter said, why don't you put on your page that you're 100% open source? And I said, we don't, never put that on our page because that's just you know, how we work. We assume that, we assume everyone knows that about us uh -huh. and, and we're going forward. And he says, well, I don't know. Perhaps there are others who don't know. And he's right. Right, you know, the world's changing, we're expanding you know, uh, our, our opportunities in, in front of uh, folks. In the same way, right, we've only and always known um, ways to collaborate with others in the community. Mm -hmm. um, before we fully embraced OpenStack, right, there were certain projects that Red Hat was investing in that were Red Hat driven, and then we said, hey, maybe there wasn't as much community around it. We're going to go down and embrace uh, and fully participate in the OpenStack community. Mm -hmm. Same is the case, for example, in Kubernetes too, right? Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a project that you know, we create our own you know, in, in conjunction with Google and many others in the community. Uh, and so that's just something that's you know, part of our DNA, right? I, I'm not sure we're doing anything different um, in engaging with communities, just, just you know, how we work. Yeah. So, Ishesh, I know your team's busy doing a lot of things. We've been hearing about what sessions are overflowing, um, you know, down on the expo floor. Yeah. So, I want you to give us some, some visibility, but there was one specific one I wondered if you could start with. So, sure. down on the expo floor, um, it's a containerized environment, and it has something to do with puppies, and therefore, how does that connect with OpenShift 4, if we can start there? Uh, that's a tough one. You're going to have to go and ask the puppies how to make a difference in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we go from Kubernetes to canines. That's yeah. what we're doing here. So I, I do believe they're comfort dogs, but there, there was coding and some of the other stuff. So give us a little bit of the walk around, you know, the expo flow, the, the, the breakouts sure. and the like, and some of the hot areas. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, yeah, so maybe not puppies, but maybe we're trying to herd cats, uh, you know, good, close good. enough, right? Yeah, right. Um, Safer terrain. <laughs> um, the amount of interest, the number of sessions are uh, with, with sort of OpenShift or container-based technologies, cloud-based technologies, uh, I mean, it, it's tremendous to see that, right? So, so regardless of you know, whether you see the, the breakouts that we've got in place, um, the customer sessions, I think we've got, uh, you know, I don't know, over 100 customers, I think, uh, who are presenting on all aspects of, of their journey, right? So to me, that, that's remarkable. Um, lots of interest in our roadmap going mm -hmm. forward, you know, which is great to see, right? Um, you know, standing room only for uh, OpenShift 4 and kind of you know, where we're taking that. Um, other technologies that are interesting are, uh, so the work, for example, we're doing in serverless, mm -hmm. right? We announced uh, an open source collaboration with Microsoft around something called Kada, the, the Kubernetes, Kubernetes event driven right. um, auto scaling project. Um, so, interest in kind of you know, how um, customers can engage uh, around that as well. And then the partner ecosystem. Right, so you can walk around and you can see just a plethora of ISVs, right, who are all looking to build operators or have built operators and are certifying operators uh, within our ecosystem. And then it's uh, you know, ways for us to expose that to our joint customers. Mm -hmm. I tell you, we're going to cut you loose and let you go. The floor is going to be open for a few minutes. Those puppies are just <laughs> down behind Stu over here. Well, let's go check that out. All right, thanks. I hear you can adopt them if you want to. Yeah, it's, so. it's, be before we yeah, let you go, right. oh, okay, see, see the comfort dogs. Thousand customers, you know, wh wh where do you see as we, we come back a year from now, where you are, where you want to see it go, you know, show us a little bit looking forward. So, there have been some news around Red Hat that have probably happened over the last few months. You know, all the people are sort of uh, hearing this, uh, probably have a sense. Um, I look at that as a great opportunity for us to expand our reach uh, into markets, right? Both in terms of you know, industries perhaps that we haven't necessarily gone into um, that other companies have been, right? You know, perhaps we say it's manufacturing. Perhaps this is the opportunity for us to cross the chasm, um, have a lot more trained um, consultants who can help get more customers um, on the journey, right? So I fully expect to see our reach um, you know, increasing over a period of time. Um, and then you'll see, if you will, iterations of OpenShift 4 uh, and the progress we've made against that and hopefully uh, many more success stories on the stage. All right, look forward to catching up uh, next year, if not sooner. Okay, and uh, uh, congratulations on today. 
Um, and uh, best of luck down the road. And thanks, thanks again for having me. Good to see you. Yeah, likewise. All right. Back with more on theCUBE, uh, you are watching our coverage live here from Red Hat Summit 2019 in Boston, Massachusetts.